So there are two basic approaches to your project's architecture. You can go narrow and deep or broad and shallow. With both, you'll run into what we like to call the Goldilocks problem. That is getting the structure to be not too deep, not too shallow, but just right. If your structure is too deep, users get frustrated and lost as they dig down through too many layers of the menu. Too shallow a structure and, you, and your menus are forced to be way too long and difficult to navigate. They each have advantages and, and disadvantages. So let's talk about them a little bit more. So narrow and deep. Again, with the narrow structure, the advantage is that fewer links presented, uh, are presented at once, meaning less cognitive load. Your user has to make less decisions at any given time. Um, it's also an intuitive pattern for directing a user down a particular path. On a downside, it means quite a few more clicks. The user can get lost in deep structure or become frustrated when the amount uh, of clicking that, th that they're going to have to do to get to their, their desired content. With a broad and shallow structure, you present more links to the user at once. This can introduce some possible friction or confusion because it's difficult to scan all those options. It's also tough to tell what's relevant or related because everything is seen at the same level. The advantage, however, is that users need to click fewer times in order to get to their destination. Too much of something isn't a good solution either, so just be careful with taking your broad navigation too far. So first talking about user expectations. Now when you're lost in a new city, you know intuitively where to look for directions. You might look to street signs or building address numbers on buildings, um, but just imagine how frustrating it can be when these conventions are broken. Now similarly, your average user has very clear expectations about where elements should be located on your screens. And violating these expectations should be avoided whenever possible so as to reduce any potential confusion. There's really no reason to reinvent the wheel here, so just remember that best practices are your friend. So here we're showing a visual um, example of these user expectations. And this is results based on some eye tracking studies that were done. So let's just walk through each of these elements and talk about where your users expect them to be. So first we have in red our home link or logo. And you can see that based on these maps, uh, the users usually expect this element to be in the very top left corner of your application. Now next in purple, or it looks like pink here on the screen a little bit, is what we're calling utilities. Now this means maybe the system time, login and log out links, or other system level information. This is looked for in the top right and at the very bottom of your application. Next, in green, we have navigation links. And as you might expect from our use of you know, websites and the web, uh, that folks look for these in the header and sidebar areas. And finally, in orange, we have a page title. And that's usually expected to be roughly in line with your content in the middle of the page. So just keep in mind that this specifically is a US-based example, and you'll want to take into consideration your specific user base and whether or not they're from a country that might read right to left or have other common layout uh, conventions. So let's get into layout best practices. And as Steven mentioned, your typical user sort of scans, clicks, and jumps around the screen really quickly. So in order to facilitate this type of natural user behavior, we're going to want our layouts to be designed as clearly as possible. So now we're going to walk through these four simple but powerful layout best practices that should help you in designing your next project. And these include having a clear visual hierarchy, breaking up your screens into clearly defined areas, making it really obvious what's clickable, and just reducing the overall clutter on your screens. So first up is clear visual hierarchy. Now this just means making sure that the appearance of your content clearly reflects its importance. Uh, so the most important thing on a screen should be called out in some way. Maybe that's just making it larger or you just want to make it louder in some way. And you can use tools like color, white space, bolding the text, or some other combination of these things to make that happen. Next up we have clearly defined areas. Now we want to give our content its home on the screen, and we're going to accomplish that through grouping similar types of content. And the goal here is to just let users know where they can find information. We really don't want them to be hunting around our project screen looking for things, especially once they've found something like it. So just a final note on clearly defined areas is to try to really remain consistent with your layout throughout your entire project. 
So being consistent uh, between your layouts is just going to make them easier to use. And here we just have a quick example of establishing clearly defined areas. And this was seen in our recent redesign of the ignition gateway. So there used to be some status information in the config sections, a little bit of config in the status sections, and vice versa. So things here were just a little bit mixed up, which made it a little bit difficult to use sometimes. And so our redesign really focused on breaking this content clearly apart into two specific sections. There's really no cross-pollination there now. And this makes it much more easier to navigate today. So another layout tool that we have is called affordance. And affordance just means making sure that the actions and links within your screens are really obvious and discoverable. Uh, we, when something has a strong visual affordance, it just means that you know what it does or can do just by looking at it. So in our graphic on the right here, uh, we have the top two gray buttons and links, which are not really obvious that they are buttons and links. And so just below it, we add some blue color, some rounded corners, and an underline, and these the visual treatments just make it much more obvious and clear that these are actionable buttons. So if something is a button, make it look like one. Being consistent is a nice trick here as well, so folks aren't left guessing. Make all of your links look the same and save someone a headache down the line. Additionally, you'll want to make it clearly differentiated, positive and act, excuse me. You'll want to clearly differentiate positive and negative actions. So if something is a destructive button or a positive action, you'll really want it to look like that. So you can use maybe the tools of color like we are here using red and green. So the final tip for a well-designed project layout um, is reducing your visual noise or clutter. So when building a screen, just remember that each element that you're adding adds to the visual noise, making it potentially more difficult to use. So be sure that you're fighting and questioning the adding of any new elements to each screen and you may even find that it's a better strategy to build out an additional screen instead. High performance strategies seem to work really well in reducing visual clutter, so that's definitely something worth learning more about as well.